This is the first time anywhere in the world ever that there's been a group of people coming together to talk about conservation geopolitics. Indeed, as far as we know, the term never previously existed. What is the future for conservation? We're trying to conserve in a world which is changing very, very fast. Can conservation be more predictive, more anticipatory, acknowledging that what we call nature now, under the influence of climate change, is going to be a new nature? The key thing, if we want to achieve conservation around the world, we should look at the values of the people, we should look at how communities are benefiting, and if they benefit, we are likely to have conservation coming. We are here as a response to a need, a need that derived as a serious issue on the world stage. Because this requires broad thinking, much broader than anything else we've done before. We are financially, politically and socially addicted to the idea that growth must, will and always be coming, no matter how rich a country already is. But let's look to nature. Ecologists, biologists, epidemiologists in the room, no nature's growth curve. It's just a small flick of the wrist, but we go from exponential to sigmoid, and that changes everything. And of course, we can do something about all of this because it's human activity that has driven us to these extremes. We are in the middle of the sixth extinction crisis. We are pushing beyond the planetary boundaries. Conservation and extinction is not a problem of animals, it's a problem of societies. We will not solve the world's largest problems if we do not lift our sight and look deeper into the horizon and figure out how we're going to connect ourselves into that bigger landscape. Because cooperation at a global scale is the solution. Connectivity not just of ecosystems, but of cultures and politics and decision making. We must work in a collaborative way to implement across boundaries and address the challenges we face collectively. In the last two days, it was an amazing event. Thank you so much for having me. I learned a lot. I also learned that a full-grown elephant has 15 pixels from a satellite image. I found this to be a, a really inspiring uh, few days with a, with a collection of people doing amazing things all over the world. Innovation is not about coming up with new, novel ideas. It is about taking lessons and approaches from other fields and bringing them and applying them in a new setting. There are approaches that exist that we can use right now, adapt them for conservation. Our emphasis is all on the future, and which is why this, this gathering is just so important today. The message that we want to put through as conservationists is that we need more lawyers, more politicians, we need people from other disciplines. And I hope that the people who are not engaged in conservation come back next year with more people that are not involved in conservation to help us. So this is an invitation that we in the CITES arena, we do need you. Please get out of your comfort zone. Come down from the ivory tower. The world needs you. This is an opportunity to, to join up and come up with some solutions. And I think we should leave here uh, full of positivity. One of the most encouraging things of the last decade is how the biodiversity and the food world have got together and are having a dialogue that you just didn't get uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Thank you to you for coming here. The smell that I get from the days we've spent together is indeed a very sweet smell. It's a smell of scholarship at the highest level. It's a smell of, of shared purpose. Uh, it's a smell of determination to rise to the urgency. So whatever you like to call it, I feel that we've shared the experience uh, of that perfume and I thank you very much for coming.